its appearance as a white mass behind the lens and first described by terry who uh, that's why it was also called terry syndrome originally 1951 campbell suggested uh, uh, the uh, retinopathy prematurity related to oxygen treatment so the normal retinal vasculature start uh, developing uh, at 16 week of gestation and uh, nasal retina is shorter uh, so it's uh, complete um, vascularized in 32 to 34 weeks uh, but temporal retina uh, vascularized at term or just uh, two weeks after birth in full term babies so retinopathy of prematurity develop uh, uh, because uh, when the baby is born it is in a hyperoxic state so that down regulate the vascular endothelial growth factors uh, and lead to vascular uh, obliteration resulting in delay in retinal vascular development so later on when the retina become hypoxic uh, it start releasing uh, uh, vegf and cause the uh, proliferation of the blood vessel branching and that uh, you can see in stage two. So uh, Lester Fielder has uh, uh, research about the birth weight and uh, retinopathy of prematurity, which is inversely proportional. So the smaller the birth weight, less the higher chances of developing retinopathy of prematurity. So uh, worldwide, the rate, uh, the preterm rates are, uh, varies, but uh, it's ranged from 5 to 18 percent. Uh, and extremely premature is like less than 28 weeks. So uh, there are about 15 million babies born every year uh, preterm. So India is the country with the highest number of uh, preterm births, which is like uh, 3.5 million. So world over, there's a uh, about 20,000 uh, babies go blind or severely visual impaired from ROP and further more than 12,000 mild to moderate uh, visual impairment. So uh, in uh, Argentina, it's uh, about 60% childhood blindness is due to ROP and about more than 50% uh, in Poland and Russia. So in India, about uh, every two, uh, two hours, three babies reach threshold disease. So this is a world map uh, by Claire Guilford Research. So it's showing uh, three colors. So countries in green, which are like uh, USA, Canada, Australia, uh, UK, and Western Europe. Uh, the uh, neonatal care is very good and screening is improved uh, so much and efficient uh, that there's hardly cases of any blindness from ROP now. And compared, uh, like, uh, and then the countries in the red, uh, there in these countries, which is like Eastern Europe, Russia, South America, uh, South Africa, uh, the India. So the neonatal care is getting better, more survival rates, uh, but the screening and uh, uh, efforts are not uh, as good for treatment. And uh, there are the maximum babies going blind with the ROP. So in the Central African region, the black area on the map is uh, uh, the neutral care is not uh, adequate and the survival rates are very low. So that's why babies are not surviving to have visual impairment with uh, ROP. So uh, international classification of retinopathy of prematurity first appeared in 1984 and which was the game changer because uh, before that everyone was recording according to their findings and uh, but this uh, classification make them right according to the grade and stages of ROP. So it's every 15, uh, 10 years, it's uh, the new uh, classification coming in. And 2005, which is at the moment is the latest, uh, make some addition with uh, describing uh, posterior ROP or aggressive uh, disease or uh, pre plus, which is uh, you know, the severity is less than the plus disease. And it also describes how the zones are uh, clinically identified. So the uh, IC ROP uh, 3 is not out yet, but it will be published this year. The complete work has already been done. You know, there's a committee, international committee for uh, IC ROP is uh, 34 members, 22 are um, 
uh, uh, retinal specialist and 13 uh, pediatric ophthalmologists. They have already given their uh, suggestions and completed it just uh, in process of being published. So they will de describe now new things which include like uh, uh, this uh, notch, on temporal notch, which is present in like uh, zone one and zone two and how to describe it. Uh, they have make some changes in zone two and also in stage uh, four especially. So th this is a diagram of zones of retina. There's no marking on the retina. So uh, clinically, when we are, we are looking through a 28D lens, uh, the indirect of the uh, keeping the disc on the edge of the field, the other edge is uh, the zone of uh, between zone one and zone two. That's the mark. And uh, if you go uh, nasally, reaching to the aura serrata and uh, draw a circle from that area is all zone two. And any, any retina beyond it uh, on temporal side is zone, zone three. So there's, there's no zone uh, three on the nasal side. So the inclusion criteria is uh, uh, any baby less than 32 weeks. So that means babies which are uh, 31 week plus six days included into the criteria. So the, this uh, inclusion criteria is according to the UK guidelines. So it sometimes varies from in different countries. So uh, less than 1,501 gram. So the baby, this 1,501 gram is not included. Babies of 1,500 gram or less are included. Uh, you only need to meet one criteria to come into the screening. And in addition to this, any baby is requested by neonatologist will be included if it's a, a clinical course was not uh, according to plan or excessive uh, oxygen therapy or uh, septicemia or like uh, any, any reason when pretty, uh, neonatologist uh, saying it's necessary to do the screening. So the first screening, uh, according to the gestational age, the smaller the baby, like 22, 23 weeks, we don't need to screen for seven, eight weeks or more, uh, because it, the process starts later on. So examination requires an indirect ophthalmoscope, 28D lens, dilating drops, speculum, uh, scleral and dental, which can be like uh, 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 disposable or uh, metallic or squint hook can be used, and aesthetic drops. And sucrose final is In the picture, the syringe is actually, actually sucrose. So it can be challenging at times, especially when the baby is uh, on ventilation or CPAP in the incubator, small space to maneuver and uh, difficult to get uh, full view. And this is uh, using a red cam camera to get a, a, a fundus image, which is uh, quite critical in uh, especially cases with uh, um, stage two or three. Uh, this I'm using a pano cam, which is a handheld device again to acquire uh, uh, fundus, uh, retinal images. So uh, I'll give you two examples from my working in UK and Pakistan. So a few learning points. So in UK, in between 1985 and 1990, there was about 6% uh, Children with uh, childhood blindness are due to ROP, uh, mainly babies below 1,000 uh, grams. Uh, the incident decreased to 3% in around 2000. But um, in last uh, 10, 11 years, the incidence is nearly zero. And that, uh, in my view, is because of two things. One is called a boost trial, and the other is Benjamin. I'll explain. So, so boost trial was, uh, I was a part of the trial in data collection. And it uh, was targeted oxygen saturation levels. Uh, so then they, they're comparing the uh, like 85 to 89% uh, oxygen saturation with the death or disability and also the ROP checked in all babies. So boost two trial with a lesser oxygen saturation was terminated before finished because of uh, you know, higher mortality. But definitely in both of the ROP was less. The other thing is, as, as the technology advanced and internet developed, there was a software used in the UK called Abagenet, uh, which is a, like um, a patient management uh, uh, network. It is uh, used in neonatal units and uh, 
maternity units. So all babies' uh, ROP findings are uh, entered into the system, and uh, then the system itself highlights when the is due for the next uh, screening. What was the finding of the previous screening? And the reason why the uh, ROP was missed in UK is not because the doctors were missing; it was because the appointment was missed. Because when they are transferred from one neonatal unit to another neonatal unit, sometimes it was not done on time or uh, completely overlooked. So this, uh, you, like you are from, even when I used to have a login, the baby transfer from like Liverpool to uh, Edinburgh or uh, from uh, any city to another city, you can immediately see what was the previous findings and it was already flagging up when the screening is uh, due. So in uh, Pakistan, the, the, the picture is of a hospital where I work. It's a, a premium institute in Pakistan uh, where I did my residency in 1998. But in 2013, I moved back to Pakistan from UK, working there as pediatric ophthalmologist. So then I visited regional uh, neonatal units, uh, the three teaching hospitals, four teaching hospitals. Uh, and uh, I was surprised to find that there, there is no uh, ROP screening service and no ophthalmologists seeing the uh, uh, neonates, young age. This is one, one of the babies done on uh, like uh, laser treatment just with uh, topical anesthesia because uh, anesthetists said that it's very high risk to do uh, general anesthesia for them. So this is a, just a picture of new little units and I did a training for local ophthalmologists and the service is still running. So this is uh, like a quadruplet I saw in Pakistan. So they, they are lying according to their birth weight from left to right. So they were born around 28 week of gestation. And the smallest was like 680 gram, then this is 750 gram, the second from the right. And that was the only child, uh, the only baby who developed treatable ROP. And there's three, even the smallest one, uh, the ROP was, was self-resolved. So uh, the experience I got from Pakistan is uh, there's uh, some racial or genetic factors. There are different uh, uh, risk groups. Like in Pakistan, the uh, much larger babies are more at risk, which were considered very low risk. In the so recording of uh, uh, documentation. So it is becoming quite standardized now and uh, recorded uh, in the form of diagram, which is coded with uh, different stages. Uh, okay. And I'll go by one by one all the stages. So uh, like stage one is uh, demarcation line, which is just, uh, it has no height, it is flat. It's just a color change from between the vestibular and avestular retina. Stage two, when it become uh, rich, it is slightly elevated uh, again at the vestibular avestular retina junction. And then the P, uh, P plus disease, which was first described in 2005 uh, classification. So it is uh, slight toxicity and dilatation of blood vessel, but still cannot call it uh, Frank plus disease. So this is like a uh, stage three with, uh, you can see the fibrovascular proliferation at the ridge and then some elevation of uh, vessels towards the vitreous cavity. And this is Frank, Frank plus disease uh, with uh, dilated tortuous blood vessels. And uh, stage four, which is divided into stage four A, uh, when uh, the fovea is uh, flat, like the uh, macula is flat, and then stage four B, when it's uh, uh, posterior pole is also detached. So usually four A start at the temporal side with the fibrosis of the retina. Uh, and stage five with a very poor visual prognosis which can be open funnel in stage 5A, 5B is a no close funnel detachment. So a picture on the bottom showing uh, this white mass behind the lens. And that's what used to call as uh, retrol. So then uh, indications are uh, the zone one, uh, with uh, any stage or no even, no ROP with plus disease is indication of treatment. If zone one, there's stage three, even without plus is indication for treatment. And if it's zone two and stage three, uh, with plus disease, indication for treatment. 
I'll explain it later and we'll talk about uh, the few, few other indications as well. So the initial treatment in 1970s was uh, cryotherapy, which is freezing of the retina. Uh, uh, and then later on, uh, in 1980s, it started uh, laser treatment, which is still a gold standard treatment for uh, ROP. And uh, intravitreal anti-VEGF injections are becoming uh, more and more common and they work very well. We'll discuss in treatment uh, in further detail. And then uh, for uh, stage four and five, the treatment are surgical. So the BTROP uh, was the first trial to compare uh, treatment of laser with anti-VEGF injection. So uh, it shows superiority of recurrence, especially in zone one disease. So uh, the, it's very important to be a aseptic technique. So uh, it's done under topical anesthesia, but usually I'd, uh, take the patient to uh, uh, operation theater or do in an NICU in a negative pressure room. Uh, iodine is very important to, uh, uh, for uh, skin preparation and even in the conjectural space diluted iodine. But then uh, injection is given about uh, 1.5 millimeters from the limb pulse, which is uh, measured by caliper. And it's, it's uh, quite a quick procedure. And the ocular complication can be end of thymatis, which is the severest complication, uh, and very serious. So, so sterility is important, and I try to use also a uh, different lot number of the medicine as well, so to uh, reduce the risk further. So when we compare uh, anti vegf with the injection with the indirect retinal laser, uh, injection is uh, easy to learn, very quick, there's no need for general anesthesia. Response is very quick. Within like two days, if you see the baby again, it seems like uh, there's no, no ROP. Uh, so re recurrence uh, is very variable in different studies. In uh, my experience, it's around uh, 30 to 40 percent. So regular follow-ups are required for long term, which I always try to convince uh, uh, the parents even before the injection that uh, it's recommended to have uh, a weekly follow-up for 12 weeks at least. And then now it's uh, uh, very advisable to do a fluorescent fantasy angiography before uh, discharging the patient uh, from screening. And then the risk of end of fundamentals. On the other hand, laser, uh, there's a long learning curve. It takes uh, time. It uh, can take from one hour to one and a half uh, for both eyes. Uh, usually it's done under general anesthesia, can be sedation or topical, which is again even more difficult. Uh, recurrence uh, is not common, so it's quoted uh, around 10 to 20 percent uh, needing further treatment. Um, and uh, high myopia, in my uh, experience, it's uh, less than 10 percent of the T2 the babies we have here. Uh, constricted visual field, especially in cases. Uh, when it's uh, done in earlier gestation with a large area of retina, uh, AVS group. But uh, post laser for re reactivation when they do laser, it is hardly affecting uh, the functional visual field. A rainbow study was published uh, recently, which compared the three groups of uh, using renivizumab injection in 0.2 milligram dose, 0 0.1, which is extremely low, low dose, and laser treatment. So since uh, it's published, uh, Renibuzumab is uh, approved for ROP treatment in Europe. So there were three arms of the study and all have like similar re recurrence, a rate of 30% of re re uh, retreatment. But uh, many babies, they, they give a second injection in both uh, uh, first group and second group, they have like 12, 12 cases of retreatment with injection. So another news now, this Arenibizumab is uh, recently, about two months back, is approved and licensed for ROP treatment in UAE. So we don't need to use any uh, off-license uh, treatment. Uh, Affiliate Bercept has been used uh, for ROP and there are many studies. Uh, uh, and this, uh, this study I quoted is uh, showing, uh, uh, comparing both Arenibizumab and 
uh, aflibercept, and aflibercept has much, much less recurrence rate. I have only experience of using it uh, in two babies with, uh, and there was no, no recurrence. And, uh, uh, but the issue is the longer follow up, uh, and uh, which can be challenging over here once the baby is well. It's uh, difficult to examine, parents don't uh, want to come back again. Uh, so I'm quite reluctant to use. And now if it's uh, uh, Renibizumab is licensed, so we will we'll be using that for all treatments. So I'll give examples of few common cases of uh, ROP. So this uh, baby was born 680 grams, 24 week. Uh, uh, Anti-VEGF was given at 33 weeks plus six. And initially good recovery, but after uh, uh, about five weeks, uh, there was a recon, which was treated by indirect laser. So the first two, uh, which is on the left, is showing the uh, early treatable ROP injection was given. And you can see that uh, the this uh, dilated tortuous vessel have recovered so quickly. This, I uh, think the second photograph is within a week of first. And then, uh, the last pictures are of uh, you know, after laser treatment. Another baby, 640 gram, 23 week. Uh, at 37 week, uh, the six uh, the uh, uh, ROP uh, given anti VEGF, and there, there was no uh, uh, recurrence. I followed up for 12 weeks and uh, now, now uh, got mild hypermetropia and doing very well. So this is a case uh, seen re recently, like the, this uh, laser I've done on Sunday, uh, 750 grams at birth, 25 weeks plus one. So intervitreal injection was given uh, early on, on 18th of April. Uh, uh, this is post-injection. And then uh, after two months, now it's uh, beyond 40 weeks of gestation, I think 42, and there, there is, uh, we start of uh, early plus disease, and I, the thirteenth was uh, this picture taken, and then we review and, and within a week on Sunday we did uh, the FFA and it shows some proliferation uh, there and had laser treatment. So there's another condition called vascular arrest, which can happen after anti vegf or can happen uh, spontaneously also. In this uh, cases, there is a like a temporal avascular patch, it's not vascularizing, maybe it's beyond 40 weeks. So it's more common with the anti -vagin. So in these cases, it's also indicated to do laser if follow-up and examination is becoming difficult. So we usually do FFA and the same time we can do a laser treatment. And this uh, FFA is clearly showing the, this uh, proliferation at the vascular avascular junction. So surgical cases, uh, this one is uh, 24 week, uh, 610 gram. Had bilateral recentis injection, then bilateral back laser. It was elsewhere in another hospital and uh, then developed left retinal detachment. And that was referred to us. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then uh, there was a, in the right eye for the recentis was given and uh, uh, right retinal detachment surgery was done. Later on, there was some uh, vitreous hemorrhage which resolved itself. The retina got flat. Then later on, he developed cataract. So this is a, a clip from the uh, retinal surgery. And it's not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it is showing uh, how stiff uh, the retina is. Uh, my colleague who's excellent with retinal surgeon is doing uh, the surgery. Uh, and it's all you can see in the periphery the laser scar marks already treated injection. So post uh, intervitreal injection, there are three types of retinal detachment. All are difficult to fix. Like one is uh, called uh, that uh, <clears throat> at the AV uh, at vascular avascular junction. There's a, a, a conventional RD elevation. Then there is a mid retinal fibrosis, which is most difficult to treat. And there's also like uh, posterior fibrosis in this case. So they are quite diffi difficult to treat and visual prognosis is poor. So, and uh, this is a uh, yeah, end stage retinal disease with uh, like funnel, close funnel detachment, total detachment, uh, 
and uh, even with surgery, the visual prognosis is quite poor. So this is 2019, we did an audit. We have seen uh, 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 about 11 cases of stage four RP requiring surgery, which we perform. Uh, and uh, we have like in uh, 2021, in the first six months, we only received two, two cases. So either it's happening less or uh, the, they refer to another hospital. So the ROP workload was around 800 or more screenings are done uh, in 2019 with the 11 uh, uh, intervital injections and 16 laser treatment. So what's new is um, uh, a wind drop algorithm. So this is uh, checking a <clears throat> insulin like growth factor one with the uh, like a, and uh, also birth, birth rate, so weighing the baby regularly, which give an algorithm of the risk of ROP. Same is done by just independently checking uh, insulin like growth factor one and third week uh, at, at that time. And then uh, it gives a good uh, prognostic tool for uh, uh, risk of ROP. So there was a pilot study for uh, propanol, which shows some improvement it need uh, a further uh, a larger study with uh, safety and efficacy. So artificial intelligence is also coming in play and this is a landmark study done by Mr. Brown. Uh, and um, so he uh, used uh, like uh, his RedCam3 images uh, import into a computer generated program which uh, check the blood vessel caliper and toxicity in giving a, a report, report accordingly, uh, and it has high uh, sensitivity and specificity. In conclusion, I'll say that uh, there's a need of more awareness among the medical professional and uh, parents uh, with premature babies of importance of timely ROP screening and uh, to prevent blindness. Uh, UE has a very high standard of neonatal care uh, and very premature babies are surviving. So, like I'm seeing like, uh, seen like once a year, like up to now in the last five years, three or four babies, 22 weeks, but regularly 23 weeks on every round uh, in both hospitals. And uh, there's uh, one or two, uh, sometimes more 23 weeks surviving. So uh, in UAE, the fertility treatments are on the rise and that's lead to multiple pregnancies and that's causing more incidence of uh, preterm babies and high risk of uh, ROP. So new technologies are coming for help. And Malafi is a new software, uh, which is we are using it in uh, Abu Dhabi. It's a healthcare information exchange program for healthcare providers. So we're getting the information from uh, other hospital, other clinicians, and it's getting better over time. It started uh, more than a year back, but now, now it's improving uh, regularly. So the, there is a, a national guidelines that are being under uh, development. So it's uh, there is a ROP consensus guidelines steering committee. It's uh, I'm honored to be a part of that committee. We are six uh, pediatric ophthalmologists uh, and uh, three neurologists, two two retina specialists, and uh, hopefully it will be published uh, before the end of the year, and that will be uh, for uh, uh, a national guideline published under. Uh, uh, and the Society of uh, Ophthalmology. These are a few references. Question, so when you decide to do surgery on baby, how freak, how how urgent it is? Within what time frame do you need to, to operate? Let's say stage four. Yeah, stage four is very urgent because surgery uh, and then, and we have seen cases, I've seen with you, some cases which change over, overnight, like within 24 hours has uh, changed. So we try to do it within 48 hours, preferably even 24 hours. So for stage three treatments, uh, for like laser injection, the in, recommended in the guidelines is 48 hours. So, but definitely within 72 hours. So we try to follow this, but there's lots of challenges in arranging it. Uh, but definitely the surgical cases I've seen with you as well, which uh, change uh, like within two days uh, from examination 
uh, going to operation theater from from uh, like uh, partial retinal detachment total, total uh, becoming a fibrous ring at the posterior pole and dr neha here from health plus albandar thank you for this presentation excellent talk on this topic and it's very important for us ob gyni as well uh, to know more about this so that you know we can counsel the patients in case they are going into preterm labor um and anything else that you feel that we should be like talking to them about if they are going into labor or at that point yeah most important is uh, like uh, check up by ophthalmologist if they come into the criteria and the follow up importance of follow up so if you can mention to them that uh, that the baby is born like uh, quite premature less than 1500 gram or less than 32 weeks it need a regular eye check up it's it's uh, and majority of cases it is a preventable uh, uh, condition for blindness so it's it is a treatable prevent, preventable condition so the uh, blindness is preventable so it's uh, only it need a regular uh, follow ups regular checking and uh, treatment on time thank you thank you so much thank you Uh, there's a question that's been asked uh, what is the success rate of injection treatment yeah. so uh, post injection uh, there is uh, like uh, recovery is very very quick i have not seen any case after injection the plus disease not resolved so uh, but the the main issue is the recurrence so it's uh, like uh, it's uh, from 20% to 60% is quoted the recurrence rate in my practice i think it's at around 30 to 40% uh, and if it's a timely laser is done can say save, save the vision well so and then uh, it's uh, done at a earlier stage so we uh, get time for uh, laser treatment and limited laser later on so it is a very effective treatment uh, only uh, there's a risk of uh, Uh, infection and end of thermitis which is a very serious risk so we always uh, uh, discuss with the parents uh, we heard about uh, a technique called flying uh, baby technique is this something that can be used in babies with rop very interesting <laughs> yeah so that's i think the law okay so I can show you the picture. Can you see the picture on the screen? Yes. Hello. Yeah. So this is a flying baby technique. So it is used for examination on the slit lamp as well. Uh, but um, uh, it has been used for uh, capturing fundus photograph. So uh, it's a technique in which uh, the belly of the baby is uh, hanging on the forearm, uh, leg and arms on each side. and the head is fixed on the instrument you can do like oct and this is being optos is done so it has helped us in uh, many cases in which uh, uh, the disease is very peripheral so with the contact uh, camera the um, the claim uh, visual field uh, the sorry field of view of uh, 130 degrees i think it's maybe slightly less so like 110 degrees uh, but optos give us 200 degree view so very peripheral disease and it gives great pictures uh, like uh, i don't have it on this uh, presentation but i can show you uh, it gives more realistic pictures than a contact camera and it shows uh, uh, like uh, proliferation in the uh, special stage 3 cases and uh, there's also a possibility of doing a, a, a fluorescent angiography on this uh, using this technique and uh, the latest uh, model of like optos uh, has got uh, it's called silver star uh, has got uh, has got uh, also the oct built in spontaneously uh, so that will be yeah so uh, there's a, a doctor called ck patel who has expertise in this technique and published a lot for all type of pathologies thank you another question that's been asked um what type of laser that that you use and uh how many visits are required for a patient yeah. so laser i'm doing a di diode laser the argon laser can be 
uh, another uh, that can be used to give equal results. Uh, the uh, so normally there are only like two or three visit post laser. The first one is like uh, within uh, like uh, five to nine days, like first visit. Then two weeks later, second visit. If it's regressing well, uh, discharge on from screening that visit, or maximum on the third visit. So it's only two or three visits. In case of injection, there there are uh, twelve or more visits. Someone's asked, uh, what kind of refractive state is common in ROP babies and what are the probable causes for this? Yeah. So uh, all premature children, there's a high risk of refractive error. So that's uh, like uh, 20 to 30, like it's uh, 20 to 30 percent higher than the normal uh, like full term babies. So we see all type of like high hypermetropia, hypermetropia, high stigmatism, uh, myopia. And um, uh, there can be lazy eyes more common in premature with uh, an asymmetropia and uh, squints as well. But uh, uh, for post laser treatment, it has been noticed uh, that there is uh, uh, some, some children develop uh, high, high, high myopia. It's in range of like uh, minus uh, 9, minus 10, even uh, as a baby. So, this uh, the pathology, pathogenesis is described as like. Uh, yeah, the uh, scarring uh, the mid peripheral retina caused some elongation of the glow, leading to this type of refractive error. Uh, in my experience, or in the past like uh, ten years, it's uh, not not as common. Uh, I think it's because uh, the most studies are uh, uh, pre uh, anti VEGF injection, because if we are doing laser of post anti VEGF injection, it's a limited laser compared to the one. This is done for a primary treatment at uh, uh, low gestational age. So our experience is only 10%, like uh, if I treat 10 babies, it's uh, hardly one uh, or less than one uh, get like uh, high, high myopia.